No, they won't do anything. Stop discussing it. Stop debating it. You're dealing with Cro-Magnum man here in the NHL's alleged Department of Player Safety. If you think they're going to do something about the face of the league being taken out by a cheap, high hit after that team's head coach had accused all his players of being soft four times in the previous game, then you have not been paying attention to the National Hockey League. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Pirates that I hope you'll check out. Rangers 5, Penguins 3 in Game 5. Penguins had the 2-0 lead within a three-minute span of the second period. It turned into a 3-2 deficit. A few seconds later, Jake Gensel scored, made it 3-3, and then Philip Heedle scores the only goal of the third period to break the tie. And it's going back to Pittsburgh tomorrow night. And by every feel that I had inside Madison Square Garden, you won't see Sidney Crosby in game six. Now, I don't know that. I strongly suspect that even Sid and the team's medical staff don't know that. But when it comes to head injuries, concussions, and you're talking about Sid, you're going to err on the side of caution, not because of hockey, but because of life. It doesn't take much of a rewind through his career to remember how scary the one bout with concussions was following the cheap shot that he took from David Steckel at Heinz Field. Nothing will happen as a result of this. And, you know, if I can jump ahead here, it wouldn't matter if something did happen, at least not from the standpoint of this playoff series. Truba is a second-pairing defenseman who's gone from being kind of a soft guy who got criticized nonstop for it in Winnipeg. And as soon as he came here to New York, they turned him into this beast who takes cheap shots and eliminates really good players around the league on a regular basis. Three of them this season alone. Did it to Nathan McKinnon of the Avalanche. Did it to Jujar Kyra of the Oilers. And now this. Patterns in place. He is who he is, or at least he is who he's become. But whether he plays or not won't impact the series all that much. That's not why you try to seek justice on these things. You try to seek justice so that there's some kind of deterrent. There's something that prevents a player and or coach from saying, hey, here's a tactic. Nothing else is working for us. Let's just go and hit them in the head. The Rangers did it twice to Jake Gensel in the first period in rapid succession. And then when Truba had a chance to line up Sid, He went at him high. He had the chicken wing up. He had the chicken wing up even after he went through him, which is normally a red flag that just makes a suspension automatic. You won't see that here. You won't. Because that's not how this league, which happens to be based in this city, rolls. This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins is brought to you by the good people at the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they're committed to providing food for all of our neighbors in need across western Pennsylvania. They, in turn, need your help. Find out how $1 can be turned into five full meals for those in need. Visit pittsburghfoodbank.org. Now, you can roll your eyes at my bringing up that the NHL is headquartered here. Go right ahead. I don't care, really, honestly. I've seen way, way, way too much of it. And I've also seen that the NHL will react in part to a public outcry. The louder the outcry, 
the more likely they'll have a reaction to it. See, for example, anytime anything happens to the Toronto Maple Leafs or Montreal Canadiens. Or the New York Rangers. But there won't be any such thing emanating from anywhere other than Pittsburgh and maybe a few other people who love hockey across the continent. Why? Well, in part because, at least from what I've heard from readers of DK Pittsburgh Sports and listeners to this show who communicate with me, this was a total non-issue on the national broadcast. I don't hear those. I don't see those. I never do in any press box, but I'll take your word for it. And I can share back with you that in Gerard Gallant's press conference after this game, it never came up. And before you ask me, why didn't I bring up something? Those are separate rooms. We're, we're doing our press conference with Mike Sullivan and the Penguins people the same time in a separate room. The New York people are doing stuff with Gallant and the Rangers. Gallant certainly wasn't going to bring it up himself. All he did was when someone asked about you know how much Sid not being in the game would change the game. He just said, "I you know I hope he's okay." Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. I could probably do about oh ten consecutive episodes on this subject, and continuously find fresh material to apply to it. But that's because this story's so stale. This story's been going on for. So ridiculously long, not even a CTE lawsuit, which I thought was going to be the one thing that could have had the NHL start taking this stuff seriously, did anything. NHL found a dollar figure, they paid it, and not a thing changed about the way the game is adjudicated on the ice or off the ice when it comes to supplemental discipline. So you can, if you're gallant, you can have as a tactic Hmm, Jake Gensel is leading the series in goals. Let's hit him in the head repeatedly. Sidney Crosby's been the best player, not just in this series, but in some respects in the entire Stanley Cup playoffs to date. Let's hit him in the head. Let's do that. So there's nothing happening for the Rangers in the game. They don't really get off to much of a good start other than those couple of hits to Jake's head. The Penguins are shutting them out 2 nothing, and boom, there goes Sid. Oh, and not long after that, boom, 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 the Rangers score three times. Wow, what happened? What changed? What was the momentum swing there, coach? This is all okay. You have to understand this. This is all okay with the people who run this league all the way up to and including Gary Bettman. Every last one of them is okay with this. Their concern when they do review this hit, and they will, will be about Truba and about doing right by Truba. And I know this because that's how the process works. They actually talk about it openly. They want to make sure that they don't put in too harsh of a punishment to be fair to the player. What's worse, and I can add this parenthetically, the National Hockey League Players Association, which is supposed to represent all players, including, by the way, the great ones, will go to bat for Truba. If the suspension... Not that it's coming, but if the suspension were to be too harsh, the NHLPA would jump in on Truba's behalf. Nah, this is this is what you're dealing with here. This beautiful sport, this beautiful sport, and this tremendous, iconic athlete who is everything that you'd want your league's most famous player to be, got leveled with a hit to the head as a tactic, as a tactic, and the league will do nothing about it. When we come back, a very much related J1Q. Today's J1Q comes from Sam Wheeler, who says, 
Dear Mr. Kovacevic, he gets real formal. I've watched probably 90% of every Penguins game that's been played since 2003 or so. I stopped watching this game when Sid went down the tunnel. It was a familiar sight. An Olympic-level athlete, unquestionably the best of his generation, and by all accounts a great human, laid out by a cheap, illegal, uncalled hit to the head. I felt a familiar sense of rage, disgust, and helplessness at the lack of a call, concern for Sid's long-term health, and full knowledge that the NHL's Department of Player Safety won't do anything. Anyway, I turned on the NBA playoffs. Basketball isn't hockey, but at least none of the Celtics hit Giannis in the head with a flying elbow while the refs looked on. Since this is supposed to be a question now, why is the NHL like this? Do they pathologically hate money? What is the NHL's argument for anyone to give a damn? You know, Sam, uh, other than you referring to me as Mr. Anything, I'm with you all the way through this. I wouldn't watch the NBA, mostly because I don't have time. I don't know what a Giannis is, <laughs> but I'll take your word that this is some significant player. What I do know is that I've been using the phrase for a lot of years now, best sport, worst league. And I've used it as a hashtag on Twitter. I've used it in columns. I've spoken it on this show. And that's what I see here. I, I love hockey. I've had hockey in my life in some form or other since I can remember. But hockey's hard to love. The NHL makes it that way. They have no idea what they're doing from a marketing standpoint. They have no idea how to build up what's the best of the league, meaning the best traits of the sport, the best players of the sport, the best people of the sport. They have no idea what they're doing. They still view everything within the context of how it used to be in the 1960s, which is that all 20 players, all 18 skaters and both goaltenders are equals and should be treated as such. Although the NBA obviously did a lousy job on selling me, it sure sounds like they do a pretty good job of selling a whole lot of other people on who are the best players, who are the best basketball players in the world and why they come to the NBA. What makes them special and distinctive? Yes, I understand there are differences in the sports when you have 20 people on one team and five, basically, when it comes to hoops. But this league won't change. This particular approach, this completely ass-backward approach, until this commissioner's gone, until someone comes in into that role, and says, what in the hell are we doing here? Sidney Crosby got taken out? Out of an elimination playoff game. When the other team's back was to the wall and the coach had announced to everyone that he felt his team was soft in the preceding game. And then there's intentional high hits on the leading goal scorer early on. And the same type of hit, only in open ice against the planet's best 200-foot player still in his mid-30s. A selling point for all those TV contracts the league just signed with ESPN, TNT, TBS. Yeah, go ahead and just take him out as a tactic and then endorse it within the next 48 hours by not doing a damn thing about it. And they won't either. They won't. I appreciate this question more than you can imagine. You phrased this a lot more elegantly, now, I think, than, than I just did or could. We will have another one of these. Uh, we'll have another one of these tomorrow, and there will be a Game 6. And the only thing I have to say as it relates to Game 6 is the best way to hurt the other guys is to shake their hands real firm when the series is done with a smile on your face. Thanks for listening to this. 